Now, what is a set? It's basically a list or collection of objects that share a characteristic. Okay, so an example <clears throat> if set A is a set of prime numbers. And if I were to list them of prime numbers, okay, then I would say I would, this. This is the this is the notation I would use. I would say a, okay, uh, has those as prime numbers, okay. Now, if I said sets um, b was this and there's a reason why I, I'm writing these numbers 2.34 um, 2.2 now the numbers this number okay is and this number are irrational numbers. Okay, so here's a lesson the difference between irrational and rational numbers. Basically, if you have a number and it could be a fraction, and if, let's say you, you do the sum, you do the fraction, you do that number over this, and you find on your calculator that after the decimal it just keeps going on and on and on, then we would call that an irrational number. However, the numbers here, so 4 and 2.2 are what we call rational numbers. Okay? Now, and, and believe it or not, a rational number can have a decimal point, okay? So in this case, 2.2 is a rational number because it's not continuously uh, being repeated, okay? Anyway, how does this fit into sets? If I now say set, um, if I say set x, x uh, is irrational numbers. Okay, then x would be that number, 2.3, da 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 and 3.4 okay continues and then set uh, y uh, is rational then it would be y equals uh, 4 and 2.2 and I could also say let's say set B was the universal set of all. Let's say set B was all we knew. <clears throat> I could then write down, I could draw, I could do this. So let's say this was set B. Okay. Um, and then I could put two more sets. I could do X and a Y. And basically, these two numbers would go into here, into this circle and these two, these two numbers would go into here. Okay? Now, if I then was to draw a rectangle over this, okay, and then I put this weird E symbol, then basically what is this showing me? This is showing me that E is the universal set, basically, um, basically showing you all the sets. In, in that in that particular universe, okay. Um, so we can write, we can say that X is a member of E. Okay, we can say Y is a member of E. We can say B is a member of E. Okay. Um, I can. Also say so. Sorry, this is that's the wrong notation. Is a member of E. 
Okay, so that's what this notation means. Now, um, there's also this notation here, which is this means an empty set. So that means, let's say, let's say this is E, and there's nothing in it. Okay, so that means it's an empty set. There's no numbers or objects or letters or anything like that. Okay, so this symbol stands for, remember, empty set and E, universal set. Okay, right. Now, actually, I need to go back to this. I can also, there's another symbol which is this, which means is a subset, meaning X is a subset of B because. B is a set, and within it, X is a subset of B, and X is not only one number or object, it's actually two numbers. So I can say set X is a subset of B, okay? So I can say X is a subset of B as well, okay? So that's um, what I want you, sorry, you can't see. X is a subset of B, and this is this symbol is subset, means subset. Right, let's, let's do an example. Um, also, I can, I can also say that, let's say I have another set here, okay, and I call this what Z. I can say Z is not a subset of B, because Z is not in that circle, okay? So that's another, um, another, uh, symbol that you need to know. Also, I'm going to say that you also need to know this symbol here, n. n means the number of elements in that set, meaning, so n in x, so the number of elements in x is 2, because there's this irrational number and there's that one, okay, so there's 2. Same thing, the number of elements in y is also 2, because there's a 4 and there's 2.2, there's, there's 2, population of 2. So the analogy would be like, let's say E is the um, universal, let's say it's the world, let's say B is um, Europe, and let's say X is maybe um, Slovakia, Y is the UK. Okay, so these would be countries, B would be Europe, and the entire rectangle would be the world. Okay, within X, let's say it has a population of two people, their names are this and that's okay. Y, population of two people, names of one person called four, another one called 2.2. .2. Okay, so that's the sort of analogy I want you to think about. And um, that's pretty much, um, actually, lastly, and I want to go over this. Right, now, new example. So, um, again, let's draw a rectangle. Okay. Um, draw two circles, two sets in it, so here's my universal set, and I've got two elements in it, okay? Now, um, there are two symbols that needs to be introduced, and the first symbol is the union symbol, so A union B, what does this mean, okay? So this means, this is, so it's the set of all elements, okay, that are members of A or B, okay, and make sure, and it's this symbol here. Now, the next symbol is called the intersection, and it's the opposite, okay, so this is basically it is the set of uh, all elements that are members of both A and B, right? So let's do an example, let, let me just show you. So if I put <clears throat> one, two, three, four, and maybe an eight here. A 
intersection B will be 8 because 8 is a member of both A and B. If I did A union B, it would be 1, 2, 8, 3, and 4. Okay, do, do you understand now? So that's basically the difference between these two symbols. And um, <clears throat> try not to get confused um, with them. And just finally, um, sometimes exam questions will ask you to um, shade in a particular area. So, I'm just going to give you an example. And I'm going to go over another symbol that, that um, I haven't mentioned yet. Let's say, here's my, uh, my universal set. Okay, here's my set A here. Now, <clears throat> if it asks you to shade this, what does that mean? This dash means not A. So it basically means to shade every part in this universal set that is not A. If A is the circle, not A will be this bit. Okay, so everything but the circle. One more example, just to show you that they, they can use this symbol with brackets as well. This time we've got two sets, so we've got an A and I've got a B. Okay, this time it asks you to shade uh, the portion of the set that is A union not. So basically members of A or B and not them. Okay, so not members of A or B and you need to shade that region. Basically it's going to be this, everything but what's in the middle. It's not in the circles. Okay, and just to be aware they can uh, they can really try and trick you with this this dash and they can try and make it as complicated as possible but if, if you if you get these two main points that's that's the basic foundations. Okay, next question. I'll just zoom this up for you to see. Right, so it says, copy and complete the Venn diagram to show this information. So let me explain. So first of all, we've got um, N signifies the number of elements in the universal set E. So in this rectangular box, okay, that we've got, uh, and that's 21, okay? So there's 21 elements. So the number's going up to 21. Uh, next one, we've got the number of uh, elements in A, set A, okay, and the number of elements in set B has to be 19, okay. The next statement says the number of elements in A or not B, so this dash B stands for not B, has to equal 8. And then finally, the number of elements in set A has to be 12. So, let's just write that down again. So we're saying N, the number of elements in the universal set is 21, the number of elements in A and B is 19, and the number of elements in A or not B is 8 and finally the number of elements in A is 12. Right, now let's just do our Venn diagram. Okay, so this is our universal set. And so we know that it has to have 21, okay? And if I'm just going to do the circles, and in the question we've got dot, dot, dot here, dot, dot, dot here, okay? So these are the blanks we need to fill. So each one of these, one, two, three, four, needs to add up to 21, okay? So let's just break down, first of all, what... Uh, this notation is telling us. So, it's telling us that 19, okay, has to fit in 1, 2, 3, these places. But it's also telling us that the number of elements in A or not B is 8. 
Okay? But it tells us the number of elements is in A is 12. So let's have a look, first of all, let's, look, let's put these two together. So we're saying in A there are 12 elements. But in A or not B, they, there are 8 elements. So if this was B and this was A, I want to make sure this adds up to 12. But I know for a fact that the part of it that is not B has to be 8. Okay, so I can actually put this down as 8. Then I can actually put a number 4 here because I know that 8 plus 4 equals 12. Okay, so I've done half of, half of this Venn diagram. Okay, now what's the next thing it says? It says the number of elements in A and B is 19. Well, I've got 12 here, so what do I need to add to 12 to make 19? 7. Okay, so, and then lastly, it says 21 altogether. So, 19 plus what gives me 21? Well, it's 2. Okay, so I've answered this particular question. Um, and that's the end.